Who do we have here? Let's see, 13, it looks like. Okay, I think we're gonna go ahead and start, Destiny saying. Yeah, go ahead, Destiny. All right, so everybody ready? You guys kind of look uh, sleepy, maybe? Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get rolling. Hi, hi, Rob, welcome, thanks for coming. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay. Um... Yep, I've, I've got to switch my hat right now and um, come into um, CNCF time. <laughs> yep, whoop, switch it really fast. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we're going to follow the agenda, right, Destiny? And then we'll just work our way through. And then anyone who wants to add or, you know, ad hoc stuff can definitely do that. Okay, so... Um, so we'll be respectful of each other, of course. Our code of conduct says all of those things. You guys know the rules. Everyone knows we love each other. It's all fine. So um, any new faces today that we need to introduce? Any new folks? I don't think so. If, if anybody needs to introduce themselves. Please well, we have, have someone, but Zeno, I, I don't know how to pronounce Zeno Xian, uh, who is not on camera. So, they did an introduction in the chat. Let me just write. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, let, let me see if I see it. Oh, yes, hello. Hi, welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. okay, we, we can just wait maybe and then. I'll post something on the chat. Uh, Emily Jun, uh, Emily Jun, I think uh, we know you, but it would be nice if you say a few words about yourself because you are joining our meeting after a bit of time. Um. I come to the meetings, I don't usually have my camera on um, because I lived with people before and I just moved into my very first own apartment all by myself in Oakland. So yay. Um, I work for the um, Linux Foundation. I help them build exams for the emerging technologies and um, I am hard of hearing. So um, I don't know sign language, but I've been learning. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I am a Drupal core maintainer, so I work on accessibility for Drupal, and I do some accessibility work for a group called Accessibility Talks, where we have folks come on every month and talk about um, digital accessibility and inclusion. Thanks, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you. Destiny says, it's really nice to meet you, Amy June. Welcome. Um, and um, maybe uh, I think we all saw each other in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Zeno Jiang is waiting for the camera to be enabled so we can get started. And whenever that is working, we just do the intro in between. So technology is not always collaborative. <laughs> oh, we do have Travis joining us. So I think we can make that intro. Um, Travis, would you like to introduce yourself? If not, that's okay. We can introduce our team or what would you like to do? Hi. Hi. Sorry, hang on. <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself, Travis, or you just like to wait? Yeah, hi, my name is Travis. And um, my sign name is like this. And um, I work for Convo. And I'm an engineer. And I'm here because, you know, I just really want to see what you guys are up to and listen in. And um, I'm interested in the conversation and introduce, I I'm interested in Kubernetes and that technology. So I'm just here to learn. Welcome. It's wonderful to have you. And we'll explain more as we go along about the CNCF Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group 
which is what we are. And um, I'll introduce you to the co-chairs. I'm Destiny. I'm one of those. And Rob Koch is the other one. And um, so here we are all together. So anyway, uh, we have um, two group leaders and we have also Milad and um, Anastasia. They host meetups. Yeah, well, you can join that later. You can definitely join that later, Milad Singh. Yes. Welcome. So um, we also have um, the sign language team. We've just kind of gotten that working. Um, and that is with Jay, who just waved at you. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So we're really excited to get that rolling. And we also have... Um, we're working some working on some stuff in DC so um perhaps we can um create a team like several teams of people that we have like sub teams that they can work on certain issues um and then we can support each other that way and um because it, it takes a lot of time and if we're going to work together on some things it'd be nice maybe to have smaller groups to uh focus on certain topics because i know we're all busy we're all overwhelmed with life and you know um it's a lot of stuff going on and so perhaps we can um try to set up a, you know teams or uh small groups or even partners that we can work on specific um, times or specific topics and, you know, maybe 30 minutes or an hour occasionally, maybe weekly and um, whatever works best, you know, and whatever you have with DC now. So um, there's, there's a lead DC and, um, and that's online to help you with interviews, uh, talks, anything related to, um, technology that means that you're going to be out with the public or interviewing with um, someone and it can help be a guide for you and help you think about um, you know it's just something to keep in mind um, if you need it as it comes up so let's see Sharla um, I have I don't think we've met you and um, you maybe want to add to that message because um, you could introduce your thoughts on that. And I, we just, we're going to touch on it on the agenda. And um, if you want to um, elaborate on that, you certainly can. And we have a few other DCs, um, like best practice DCs kind of thing for um, deaf and hard of hearing folks, of course, but um, globally as well. And um, just general public kind of stuff. So I have, um, it's called Understanding Diversity. And then there's a deaf and hard of hearing one. And um and then there's an English ASL closed caption one. And um, so you can pick what fits best for your needs and um, make it as inclusive and diverse as possible so that people can be aware of different things and different needs, um, things they might need to look at, uh, learn resources, et cetera, to learn about us. And um, anyone can contribute so um, it's, I'd really like to create those small sub teams though. Um, so we can work on that. So you don't have to focus on the whole thing, but maybe just pieces of the puzzle. And then, you know, you can also get together with your friends and have these conversations. So that's also fun. So let's see, we have um, best practices and we want to work on that soon, um, sooner rather than later. And um, we want to be inclusive and welcoming for the whole community to come um, for CNCF um, learning groups like we have like Milad and um, and you're in Budapest. Uh, what's the sign for that? I know, is there, um, that's Hungary, the sign for Hungary. But Budapest is like this. It's like a shaking back and forth. Why Budapest? Yeah, I have to remember that. Okay. Um, so he's having small groups and meetups there. So if you want to start one yourself, you know, we can work on that first as well. But the DCs, um, we need to work on those. And um, if that works. Okay. So now um, we have um, future talks and events. And I'm really excited about that because um, we have KubeCon, um, Cube Crash. We're signing that for Cube Crash. And um, so, Rob, um, that was an amazing experience. So now I'm going to let um, Sandeep talk. And um, oh, he's going to have a talk tomorrow, rather. Is that right tomorrow? Is it Rob? Rob says, no, I'm just joking. Anyways, okay, uh, no. So 
Cube Crash is going to be having a panel discussion. We have a few people that are going to be talking about IDP, internal development platform. Um, so we'll have a few folks talking on that topic, you know, where it's going, what the future looks like for IDP. And then we have some experts in the industry that'll be discussing similar topics. Also, Sandeep will be giving a summary about his experience and his journey as a deaf and hard of hearing developer, right? Destiny says, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be talking about um, the hidden power of advocacy. It's really exciting. Hopefully you all are registered and you all will be there. And Rob's saying, well, we have a plan to, wait, Destiny, you disappeared. Where are you? Destiny says, I'm right here. I can go anywhere. Okay, Rob says, all right, I got you. I, we have a new interpreter, so, so her video um, took over Destiny's video. My apologies. Anyways, okay. So Destiny, what is next on the agenda? Destiny says, next on the agenda, we're going to be talking about Jay um, Jackson and Andrew, the interpreter missed the last name. Um, they're going to be presenting at Agile 2024, the grapevine, um, on July 23rd, pretty soon. They're going to be talking about the bridge, bridging the gap, accessing the power of deaf and hard of hearing power. And that's gonna be happening July 23rd this year. That's gonna be their talk, really exciting. Can we make a quick pause break? So can you repeat? <laughs> Just like, um, cause uh, Zeno Xiang um, joined with a camera. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we get an introduction as well. So uh, the floor is yours. Welcome. Me? You want me to say something? Okay. Hello, everyone. Sorry, one second. We're getting oriented. I think Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam, thank you. I'm from Vietnam, so uh, I know just a very little bit of ASL. Um, Vietnam. My name is Chien. This is my sign name here on my chest. C on the chest. Happy to meet you all and to learn with you. It's important work that we're doing. I know very little bit of ASL, so bear with me. And Rob's saying, can you just back up a little bit from the, the camera? It's hard to see your signs. And Zeno Chan says, is this better? Yes, better. Thank you. And he says, I just signed very little bit of ASL. I do know some international signs. Um, so ASL is still new for me. I know the alphabet, but it's very hard. So if I um, ask you to repeat yourself, that's the reason why I'm still learning ASL. Nice to meet you all. And Rob saying, okay, so we want to let you know that just remember, we have a Zoom here. We have an interpreter. So when you sign, you want to sign a little bit slow. I know it's kind of anxiety ridden to have all the attention on you, but just sign slow for the interpreter to keep up with you. Second of all, really nice to meet you, Zino Chin. Um, welcome from Vietnam. It's going to add a wonderful perspective to this group. And let me remind me, you work for AWS, is that correct? And Zeno Chin says, yes, that's correct. Rob says, wow, that's a hard interview to get into. Or uh, let me ask you, was it hard or was it easy for you? Which do you think? Zeno Chin says, I reached out to AWS and HR over and over trying to get a job. And they weren't quite sure if I had the qualifications. I had to show um, my, and Rob said, can you just back up a little bit? Because we can't quite see your hands. Milad saying, all right, just tilt your camera just a little bit so we can see less of the ceiling and more of your chest. Yeah, much better. And Rob saying, now can you just come a little closer to the camera? So we, yeah, we want to see your chest and your hands. Per yeah, your light's a little bit off, but yeah, let's try that. Zeno Chen says, is this better? 
Anastasia says, we still just see the top of your chest. Zeno Chien says, okay, so I kept reaching out to HR and AWS. And they are, they were asking me for my qualifications. I told them I already gone to the university. I'd had training and they just kept saying no. And they said, you need to, you know, work your way up the ladder to kind of get into the company. But I kept trying to reach out to different people in leadership within AWS saying that, hey, I have the skill set. I can do it. So they allowed me to take um, the interview. I was not allowed to have an interpreter. They didn't provide an interpreter. They said I had to bring my own. And here in Vietnam, the interpreter is just going to watch for a moment. So I, um, I did not have an interpreter with me, but I was able to show my experience through my skill set. Um, I wish AWS, you know, had the funds or the budget for interpreting services. I hope and wish that that will change in the future. Rob says, great, wonderful. Welcome, Zeno Chen. So AWS, I feel like there was another deaf individual that worked there before. Um, and this is the interpreter, everything froze for me, oh Lord. Um, Rob's just saying that um, the person who used to work at AWS moved over to Google. And um, I think there were maybe a couple of deaf people there, but a very small number. This is the interpreter. I have to leave and come back. My Everything's supposed to okay. be right. Okay. So their interpreter had technical problems, should be back. Okay. Just so you know. What did you say? Rob's asking, can you repeat what you said? Um, it's like, um, it was like, I think it looks like the sign for government, but I'm not sure that's that's what he's saying. Um, hang on, I think, I think Chin's gonna write in the chat possibly. Uh, so this is the interpreter switching again. Um, so Zeno Chen is saying, <laughs> so here in my position, I'm trying to great gate more awareness about the potential of deaf community members to work within tech. Problem is that the leaders need more proof about how the value that deaf employees can bring. They wanna see what market trends are, different types of statistics. Um, but in the meantime, we're trying to bring in more deaf employees. They're saying no, they're, but unfortunately that's the way it is. We're hoping to improve it though. Rob says, okay, wonderful. I see Catherine, you have your hand up? No, I just wanted to say that it sounds like you've been extremely persistent, um, so it wasn't easy, uh, but good for you that you really fought and fought until you got the chance, so uh, that perseverance is important, so yeah, that's awesome. I mean, a lot of people would probably have given up, so good on you, and that's how you, you know, succeed, you know, it's, it's hopefully it's going to be easier for the next generation, not the next generation, maybe just very soon, but yeah, that's one of the things that we're trying to work here, right? Making it easier and for everyone to get the same opportunities. But I'm really impressed by all that you've done and how much you fought. So congrats. This is Rob, yeah. So Zeno Chen reached out to me, I believe a year ago at this point. Is that right, Dino Chin? Yes, yes, that's right. And he asked about how he could enter into the cloud, enter different things. And I suggested the certification, which he did pass those different tests. Congratulations. 
Um, also the AD, AWS, like how to do it um, in Vietnam. I personally didn't know the country and the specifics for that, but you know, Chen, he was very assertive in finding out what he needed in his own country. I didn't do it anything. He did it all himself. So congratulations. That speaks to, you know, your commitment and your consistency and your perseverance. It's really incredible. You have reached out to me over the years consistently, stayed busy with the different things I've suggested, worked on your own to make it where you have today. So great job, Zeno Chin. And Anastasia says, yes, wonderful job. Zeno Chin says, thank you. And I thank you, Rob, for all of your advice. You were very clear. You helped me um, with different suggestions. If I was confused or lost, you were able to kind of give me some suggestions. So that helped me when I was talking to people within AWS about what I needed and how I could help contribute to the organization. I think it's really important to have those certifications. Without those certifications, um, I wouldn't have had any ground to stand on. So I really appreciate you helping advise me to take those certification tests so that I could make, make it. And Rob saying, what product are you working on with an AWS? And you know, Chen says, I'm look, working with the cloud. And Rob says, okay, but the, but what specifically in the cloud? Incognito? Is it more data related? And Zeno, Zeno Chen says. Cloud engineering. And Rob's saying, okay, but what are you working on as a cloud engineer? Are you working on the console or, and Zeno says, oh, okay, yeah, I'm working on the, uh, that. Mm -hmm. What was the sign for that again? What did you just say? And Rob's saying, I just spent, spelled it out in, in finger spelled. So Zeno Chen says, yeah, that's right. That's what I'm doing. Rob saying, I understand that you're an engineer, but I was just wondering what AWS product that you were working on. So is it the database? Is it more security related? Um, what are you working on? Uh, Zeno Chen says, I'm also working with security. And Rob says, okay, okay, great. Anyway, um, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself. Does anybody have any questions for Chin? And Zeno Chin says, you feel free to ask me anything. And Milad says, um, I would like to ask more about um, deaf individuals working as cloud native employees, maybe you could uh, join our meetings more often and we can just learn more about you and your work. I'll reach out to you though for more questions. And Zeno Chan says, it's hard here because uh, the community is small. We don't have interpreting services. What's really, really important is you have to work with leaders within companies like AWS or Google, Azure, about the importance of hiring deaf employees. I wish this was discussed more often. Interpreter missed that. Um, oh, so so as you know, um, Vietnam was communist, and so we follow China in some politics, and so there is some political tensions about some of that sometimes. So we want to work with the leaders within these bigger companies to become more inclusive in their hiring practices. About a year ago. If you remember, um, oh, the interpreter's not catching that. Just one second. Who 
kudos on the interpreters too. So it's not easy with international. Uh, reinvent 2023. Um, so I was invited to go. I was really excited to go. Um, but I was not able to go. I was, um, I had to stay and I had to work. Um, The interpreter missed that wasn't quite clear. Delane, did you get that? Nope. And I was just trying to type to you and having a hard time doing that. So sorry. It's time to switch anyhow. <laughs> I, hope, I think he's just trying to say that he didn't get the visa. Maybe. Maybe it's just my assumption that he was invited to re one, but he couldn't get the visa in time. Just my guess. Yeah, the closed captioning's not, maybe it's not working so great either. Anyways, welcome. We're glad to have you. And um, I love having people from all over the world. I know it's making the interpreter's lives a lot harder, <laughs> but it's, it's, I mean, it's great. That's what we want to build a global community. So uh, thanks for joining. And I hope you can come more often and then go to the meetup that Milan uh, and Anastasia host. Uh, there's also like a sign language happy hour, which is just for people to chat. So yeah, take advantage of all that and to, you know, just hang out with your peers, learn from each other. So I think there's a lot this group has to offer. So I'll hope you stick around. Great, thank you. And um, I know um, with in the cloud at KubeCon, Rob, I know you connected to that, and um, I know you went. Did did was there a charge for that, or did you have to pay? Well, um, we do have some scholarships. Rob is saying, and um, we do have some money for that, and you do get paid a small stipend if you do a talk. Um, or if you lead something, um, um, and also minority scholarships. Um, so if that means like somebody who's trying to get in to cloud native and move up in that space, there are some scholarships available for that. Um, you do have to fill out an application and then they will say either yes or no and approve you or deny you. And then you might get some cash for that. And destiny says, yes, that's true. Okay. Rob says, okay, yes. And also um, your employer might, um, the company where you work might send, give you some money so you can go as well. They might pay for your trip. Does that answer your question? Malad, do you have your hand up? Yes, um, it finally worked. <laughs> I've tried it before, so thanks. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so I did want to tell you, Shin, um, that this group is really wonderful and um, it's a great place for deaf and hard of hearing people to discuss their experiences and to help each other. And if you want to get in to this group and stay here, that'd be great. Um, we have monthly meetings in this group. And we all get together and um, then we have some other groups where deaf and hard of hearing folks can get together and talk about ideas and stuff without interpreters. We just talk to each other. And um, it's not the same as now. It's kind of a different type of meeting. It's more of a conversational meetup kind of thing. And then there's also, we have um, Anastasia, and um, you can talk to it too if you if you want to. If, did you raise your hand? Yeah, Anastasia's name sign is like seven Q. Um, did you want to talk, Anastasia? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it she does one to a meetup as well, and so um, if people are interested, um, they can come and talk about their experiences, or they can choose a topic that's relevant to cloud native technology and um, present. And like Rob, for instance, has done a couple of those. Um, 
and um, there'll be some presentations similar to what you've done before. Um, and then you can develop more of your knowledge and skills and reach out to people you've made contact with and um, have those resources available to you. So those are just a couple of things that we do. Every month, yes, okay. Um, and when you're talking about the one without the interpreters that you have the meetups, um, do you use like international sign language or ASL? Um, we just try to help everyone understand um, some, we do kind of a mix, like <laughs> we do some international sign language or some ASL and, you know, we just ask each other questions and gesture and learn from each other and um, just kind of wing it as we go through. Okay, so also, um, what time does that happen? Um, Cause sometimes if it's really late for me, I can't make it. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we discuss um, times and we try to plan them at different times so everyone can um, have their needs and time zones met. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, what is your name? Oh, my name is Milad. And my name sign is like this because of my dimple. <laughs> okay, so, um, Yes, so it's really nice to meet you all. Sorry, um, I just wanted to make sure I understood. And okay, nice to meet everyone. And Destiny, th yeah, that's me. I'm Destiny. And my name sign is a D here on the side of my chin. Yeah, Destiny. And J, oh yeah, uh, my sign name is just J-A-Y. I just spell my name, it's short. <laughs> we could make it like this, like for your hair, because it sticks up on top. Oh, that's funny. So yeah, <laughs> Milad too. Milad has the same hair. <laughs> okay, so yes. Um, let's see. And um, Charlalaine is hearing. So yeah, I don't. I don't know if you have a sign name, Charlalaine. Um, and Amy June, do you have a sign name? AJ. Just use AJ. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and. Sandeep, do you have a sign name? Um, I don't know. <laughs> yes, and Travis, what was your sign name? Yeah, um, you guys might have forgotten before. I'm in the US, um, I'm in New York, and my sign name is Travis like this. Okay. And then Anastasia, is that right? Is that your name sign? Yeah, it looks like seven, seven Q. Um, and I am living currently in the UK. UK. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm learning all these words. I'm, I'm understanding a little bit better already learning from you all. Thank you. Of course. Happy to do it. Okay, um, are there any more questions before we move on on the agenda? I think move on, my lad's saying. Okay, looks like everybody's doing well. Okay, so, all right, again, um, if you feel like you don't understand something, of course, ask, you know, DM, um, Slack, um, or you can, if you don't feel like talking here, there's other opportunities to contact us rather than during the meeting, if you prefer. Oh, um, and, um, I think, do we have any other talks? I think Jay um, and Andrew are gonna have a talk soon. Is that right? Um, yeah, on um, the 23rd of, of June, was it? Um, and then next we have Amy June talking about um, meeting invites. Would you like to go ahead, Amy June? Thank you. Um, I've been sharing the invites through LinkedIn and all that stuff with my community. And some of the feedback I've got is sometimes when they go to a meetup, they don't know that there isn't an interpreter there. So I'm asking like for inclusion reasons, if we can all like make an effort to say whether or not there's going to be closed captioning, live captioning and a sign language interpreter. So everyone can feel included. That was just an ask and we can maybe make that part of our best practices. But I've had a, a few people recently ask me about that for inclusion. Catherine, did you have something? Yes. 
I was on mute. Uh, which meetings, Amy June? Do you know what? Um, a few of them across the board. I'll look and see which ones my my community was talking about. But I share you all share stuff in Slack, yeah. and I share that with my network. So um, I'm not sure the specific ones, to be honest. Yeah, I think. But I know I'm guilty I, of this too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think this meeting does say that, uh, but probably the meetup does not say that it is in sign language. It is called like a like Kubernetes in sign language, but it doesn't say that it doesn't have any interpreters. So we should fix that. And uh, I think that's the only one. The other one is like the happy hour that is kind of very casual. So oh, I don't think we promote that. I don't think it's I'm sorry. The I meant um, within the wider community of all of us, not just this working group, but like all of us yeah. when we have, I just think I would like that added to our best practices in general. Um, oh, okay. Okay. So you mean like in general, like cloud need like in CNCF meetings in general, like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. We should definitely include that in the best practices. And, and talking about best practices, if anyone has something to add here, because I have a, I want to move, jump uh, back to the best practices real quick, or does anyone have any comments regarding Amy June's? Uh, um, okay. Yeah, I have go ahead, Sandy. Oh, no, I just have a question for Amy June that I have put in the chat. So, I mean, it's a question I'm asking on behalf of everyone because a lot I, of us want to do certifications. I, I don't have the answer to that, but I will get you the answer to that. But I know that I, I have the ability to ask for discount codes from time to time. And so if we don't have that in our, in our, in our list of um, sponsorship, scholarship, I'll ask them to include that. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, going back, so um, Destiny was mentioning that we do have, uh, so we've worked on several best practices before. We have stuff published our, on our website, which is great. Uh, we're currently not working on anything. Um, we do have two that are started and one that I think is needed. We haven't started yet. Uh, so, uh, so we have the one which is like understanding the diverse need of deaf and hard of hearing, which I think is like a good one. It's just like, cause again, yeah. like if you've never met a deaf person, some people think everyone who's deaf signs or everyone who's deaf cannot speak everyone, you know, like there are all these things and it's like, no, not everyone. There are like deaf people who sign, deaf people who speak, deaf people who leap, uh, uh, um, um, read lips and so on. So it's, um, I think it's a really good resource for anyone interested. So we got started with that because yeah, most people just don't understand uh, what that means and uh, the diversity within that group. Um, so that got started, but we never continued with it and then we have the other one which was like how do you have like a successful meeting with it's called ASL but it should probably sign language and then like spoken language and captions uh and then one and I don't think we should be working on several things at the same time but if we could like pick one and go with that and it doesn't have to be the one that we already started the other one that I think Milad would really benefit from is because he has tried to go to a KC, not a KCD, to a um, uh, meetup in, in Budapest, and it was not accessible. We know that the organizer was very keen on making it accessible, yeah, right. but didn't no, know no, how. No yeah, but he didn't know how, and captions are cost money because it's like the meetup is, it's just, a, Mark is just a regular guy who wants to create meetups and he doesn't have any budget or anything, right? So it's like, you cannot ask him to pay out of his pocket, right? So there is a way like, so he he, he wanted to learn how he can make it inclusive. Uh, and so uh, for us to kind of think about what can these small events do? Yeah, there's and, our, there are cheap uh, options. We just have, they just have to know them. So we need to, 
maybe yeah. provide some of those resources so they can be available to folks at, that don't know how to do it. Um, maybe, and maybe make that best practices list. Yeah. And also the CNCF may be willing to, or, or I don't, I think that is an option because I did ask if we can say there are three recommendations, three tools that we recommend or whatever, or, or, you know, and that's like something they have to pay for. We cannot ask someone who is doing it on a volunteer basis to pay for it, but the CNCF may kind of say like, okay, we pay for it. And like, we have these tools available. And if someone, if a, a meetup in uh, wherever meets them here, you can get the, 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 the tool or whatever. So it's like, uh, ideally the CNCF kind of owns it and pays for it. And these smaller events who have no money at all, just, you know, can, um, can use them, but it's up to us, like to first up, uh, first, uh, come up with the best practices uh, recommend tools like we uh, they cannot help us if we don't tell them how basically right we saw that there was a willingness uh, but we have to kind of define what that means um, for those groups because we did that already for the big company uh, for the big events but big events have big budgets right that this is very different because this is like again just a guy who wants who loves tech and <laughs> creates meetups like any one of us, right? And if you, if we were going to do a meetup, you, you, we couldn't ask yourself to pay uh, for accessibility tools out of pocket, right? That's not something you pay yourself, right? So I kind of feel like that would be um, a good one to start with, just because I know Milan, you would benefit from it, and uh, that group may actually be our guinea pig, you know, like the first one to make it accessible. And then based on that, we could recommend it for everyone else. I think that would be a nice um, kind of contributed article as well on how to make meetups accessible in general. Might be a good best practice to share more widely. Yeah, good, good idea. So once we have that, write it and promote it. So question to the team, because we went through it really quickly. Do we have any volunteers? And uh, uh, Destiny suggested a group of two or three people. So it's not just one person. Um, I think we do have already like the big I think you can find a partner or a group. I don't mean to cut you off or maybe like okay. a little small oh. group. Um, maybe, you know, how we how we had that happy hour meetup real quick, one hour sort of thing. What if we did a meetup and we did maybe, you know, a few minutes for the doc, we could work together. I know that sometimes we're really busy and then things kind of calm down and we'll look at the document and it becomes overwhelming really quick because we're not quite sure how to add. We don't know where to start. We have to think about it a little bit. So I think if we partner up maybe and just have a conversation and kind of give it time to just contribute to that document. I think that's a good suggestion. It's worked for me. Um, now, if Rob reaches out to me and says, hey, Desi, what do you think about this part? What do you think about my commentary here? And then, you know, I'll be like, oh yeah, that's great. And then we have a conversation about it. We help sort of brainstorm and then we add it to the document. And then we're not working on it alone. And that's my suggestion on the best way to approach this. But does anybody else have any other ideas? Do you guys want to partner up? Do you want to do small groups? I personally think that's the best way. Any thoughts? Yes, no, maybe so. Anastasia gives a hands up, a, a thumbs up. Rob says, I know that we're all very busy. We got lots of responsibilities that we're dealing with right now. Um, and I know that we typically earn less than our hearing peers do in this field. And our hearing peers are not often having to um, job hop like we do, right? So they have a big advantage to us compared to us because their earning power is more and their focus is more um, devoted to a single task. So we work and we wanna do good by our employer. So we try to keep up with our hearing counterparts. That is fine, that is the reality. So if we ask, you know, for maybe one hour or 30 minutes a week, we could get a lot done. 
It could just be an intense focus for a short period of time in which we get a lot productive, uh, be, we're really productive and we get a lot done. I know CNCF is almost purely volunteer basis. And I know some companies do pay their employees to quote unquote volunteer. Some of you all are lucky because you do get a little compensation for that. Often um, our deaf employees is, are having a hard time getting our companies to pay for volunteer hours like this. So we're not in the right place, not the right time. We're all familiar with that. That's a challenge. I understand that. We understand that. We see it. So the deadline, you know, is flexible for this. And again, this is just a purely volunteer organization. And when it's done, it's done, you know? So we kind of work with what we got. The glossary, for example, we had no hard deadline for that. It would be nice to have certain things, that's true. But again, there's no hard, hard deadline here. It could be maybe five words. Um, that could be a, a hard deadline, but for the whole overall project, we don't need one. Um, it's always going to be a work in progress. New technology will be showing up on the scene as we go. That's fine. Um, we are all thrilled to be in the presence of deaf geeks here and whizzes and to have this collaboration and this discussion. We all have very similar problems. We all see similar patterns within our work, within our industry. We see issues that we try to fix um, on our own that are similar. So we're able to share stories and experiences about how we engage with these technologies. So it's really nice to have this group to be able to share and work together and to be able to help open doors for future generations that want to get into tech that are deaf or hard of hearing. I know many people reach out to me, Destiny people reach out to you asking questions about how to get into the field. This is wonderful to see this momentum. It's very inspiring as well. And just contribute some time, whatever you have, you know, and, and in the end, it'll inspire many more than just the people here. And Destiny is saying, yeah, just reach out with, to someone, partner up, a small group, work together. Honestly, it's always really great um, when I reach out to Rob and I'm like, hey, you got five minutes, 15 minutes. Can we just work on this really quick? And we do. And we are able to be productive in a short amount of time. It doesn't have to be a super involved one time meeting where we get through all of it at once we don't have to do that it's it can be simple whatever time you can invest at the moment like rob said um we all know you all work hard and you're overwhelmed so give what you can yeah find it oops yeah so and if you need anything um reach out to anyone in our work group everyone is super supportive we're here to help and we have amazing help and support from each other. Milad, <laughs> such a great resource. I've asked you a lot of things over the years. Rob too, so please reach out if needed. Yeah. And real quick, um, so I know we don't have a lot of time. So one thing that I wanted to say regarding what Rob was saying. So I hope that once your employers see that you're getting a lot of attention, you know, like Destiny was on uh, uh, the keynote stage, Anastasia was on the keynote stage, they're representing your companies, you're interviewing. So hopefully as well, that makes it easier for, you know, like just, I mean, don't hide from your, like from your companies that you're doing this, you know, just show them that you're going representing them. Uh, making them look good because uh, your company is accessible. They employ people, uh, deaf people. They're very, um, yeah, they're they're very forward thinking in that time and in, in that sense. So that's good, really good PR for you, right? Like I mean, Charlotte would probably agree. So a lot of companies put a lot of money to showcase all the good that they do. So you're doing that. You're engaging and and and, and advocacy, but also making them look good. Right. So it doesn't mean that you can, you know, uh, work 25 percent of the time of the regular work for that. But they may start warming up and saying, well, that's fine. You know, if you do a little bit uh, for that, because it makes you look good, too. Right. So um, 
But I think once they they see actually that, right, for, especially for those who have already participated in interviews and speaking engagements. And I mean, Rob is a pro, so I'm sure they're very happy at each time he goes to a conference and gets lots of attention. So it does really benefit them too. Just don't forget that, right? Um, so yeah, lots of hands are raised. So I'll let Milan, I think you were right. Yeah, I fully agree with what you just said, Catherine. I want to add, um, it looks really good for a company when we go out, put ourselves out there, talk about our work. Um, I want to tell you a quick story. I went to Paris and I presented on a topic there. talked about real life accessibility stories of, got, of not getting access. And I don't know if you remember that, but my employer reached out to me and said, you know, access is so important. And they actually gave me a badge um, to thank me for talking on that topic. So it felt really good to be like a partner with my employer. And so now if I ask for something, accessibility related, they are so responsive. They're so supportive. Of course, we'll do this for you. So it's very different compared to the response I had before I did that talk in Paris. So I wanna just put this, just support what you said, putting yourself out there is really important. And together we can work on supporting anyone that wants to do that. Um, you can learn about presentation skills through this group here. We can support you in making that happen. This is great. Travis? Travis says, yeah, um, I don't know if you saw my question in the chat, Rob, but I did ask a question about, oh, and I missed what Rob said. So I'm trying to remember what the sign is. I, I just couldn't, I, I guess we'll have to come up with a new sign for that. And and, and Rob's saying, yeah. Um, the for Prometheus, that was in the chat. Thank you, thank you. For Prometheus and Jay saying, yeah, we can come up with our own sign. That's fine. Destiny saying, we are running out of time. And Rob says, yeah, we got to talk about Prometheus too, Anastasia, what the sign is for that, for the glossary. Um, and Destiny says, we can all join the happy hour and then have a conversation about that new sign. Okay, sounds good. Travis says, when's happy hour? Is that on the schedule? Destiny says, let me look real quick. <clears throat> We can discuss those things uh, offline. Uh, we have three minutes and maybe Jay can go real quick. Okay, yeah, sure. And Disney says, yeah, hurry, hurry. Okay, so really quick, um, the glossary team is started. Me, Destiny, and Andrew. Andrew's not here. He had some issues with miscommunication. Anyway, it's not a problem, big deal. Uh, today, we have a Slack channel that's been set up. Hopefully you can see it. It's called Glassery Silent. Let me just see what really quick. Um, and Destiny says it's the Glossary Sign Language channel. And Jay's saying, so now our goal here is to just set up a monthly meeting please come and join us. It's open. We'll talk about different terminology for these t terms, um, different signs. Uh, it's not just limited to ASL or BSL. It's just going to be a standard set of terms um, that we'll all agree on. You know, if you have an idea, we'll just throw it out there. We'll kind of make sure we can fine tune a good one that we all set up, that we all can agree on. So we're gonna start out with really simple words like container. Once we all agree on a sign, we'll move on to the next one. You know, start with really simple, basic vocabulary. Um, we also have style, video guidance and all of that in that meeting. So just join us. It's the glossary ch Slack channel that you'll get all that information from. We'll talk about when we'll be meeting and just have ideas thrown out there about things that we can work on. And then we can start moving through our list. And then we'll figure out what easiest words to start with and go from there. So that was my quick and short brief.
Okay, and then we have to stop for the interpreters. <laughs> Let's do the rest on Slack. Slack. Rest on Slack. Thank you to the interpreters. Thank you, as always. Slack, right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>